the Mikoyan Bureau gradually became the leader in Soviet fighter design. As government funding increased, Mikoyan expanded his research and development. The Bureau became a large-scale enterprise with modern equipment and well-trained personnel. In the second half of the 1950s, its designers confronted new problems as their aircraft came closer to Mach 2. The heat barrier was a seemingly unsurmountable obstacle. At Mach 2, powerful temperature stresses tore the plane's airframe apart. Radically new materials and aerodynamic shapes were necessary for flight at twice the speed of sound. On the experimental E-5 fighter, designed in 1956, the delta wing was tested. The plane reached 1,250 miles per hour in horizontal flight and was developed further. The Bureau paid a high price for its Mach 2 breakthrough. Mikoyan's chief pilot, Vladimir Nefyodov, died in an E-5 crash, trying to land the plane after its engine had failed. Each fatal crash was a terrible blow to Artyom Mikoya. Test pilots were not only skilled flyers with invaluable technical knowledge, but also the chief designer's personal friends. After Nefyodov's death, Georgi Mosolov continued tests on the new fighter together with Konstantin Kokinaki. Kokinaki was one of Mikoyan's most experienced flyers a World War II ace who had commanded a MiG-3 regiment. He worked for the Bureau during the 1950s, testing the MiG-17 and the MiG-19. In 1958, the Delta Wing fighter MiG-21F, based on the E-5, was put into production. It was designed for close air combat, could fly at Mach 2 and reach 60,000 feet altitudes. The plane could also be used for ground attack missions. It was armed with two fuselage-mounted 30mm cannons, bombs and rockets on an external carriage. In 1959, the plane was adapted to use the K-13 air-to-air -air missiles. In the early 1960s, this version, the MiG-21 F-13, was put into service in Eastern Europe, Finland and India. A version of the MiG-21F, designated the E-66, became a record-breaking plane. In 1959, Georgi Masalov flew his E-66 at 1,490 miles per hour, breaking the record then held by the Lockheed Starfighter. Another Starfighter record was broken in 1961 when Musilov reached a zoom altitude of 110,000 feet. The Delta Wing Mikoyan fighter was repeatedly modified. The MiG-21F's trainer version, the MiG-21U, designed in 1961, is still in service at Air Force schools. The experimental E-8 fighter, built in 1962, had canard surfaces and a belly-mounted air intake. Another experimental plane was designed by Mikoyan to help his friend, Andrei Tupolev, in the research for a supersonic airliner. This tailless craft, the MiG-21I, was used to test a new Gothic wing shape for the Tupolev Tu-144, which first flew in 1968. Further development of the MiG-21 led to the installation of onboard radar. The MiG-21PF, a multi-purpose fighter built in 1960, had radar mounted inside the cone-shaped intake center body and could search and track aerial targets in any weather conditions, day or night. This new MiG also had a more powerful engine, a boundary layer control system improving landing performance and an advanced ejection seat. In 1966, MiG-21PFs confronted McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantoms in Vietnam. The MiG's better maneuverability and cockpit view cancelled out the Phantom's superior firepower in air combat.
The MiG performed so well in Vietnam that Mikoyan's bureau continued to develop and update the plane for two decades. Three generations of turbojets and flight control and navigation equipment replaced one another on the Mikoyan fighter. Since 1958, 17 versions of the MiG-21 have been mass-produced in the USSR, India, Czechoslovakia and China. These planes have served in the air forces of more than 30 countries. The most recent version, the MiG-21 BIS, was manufactured until 1986. This fighter was completely different from earlier 21s. Its powerful R-25-300 after-burning turbojet allowed it to fly at Mach 2.05 and reach a service ceiling of 58,000 feet. This craft was equipped with an advanced Doppler radar and an improved ejection seat that enabled its pilot to abandon the plane at ground level. The MiG-21 BIS carried a 23mm cannon and short-range air-to-air missiles on four underwing hardpoints. Although the 21s were effective in dogfights, they were inadequate for long-range combat. In the late 1950s, Soviet air defense needed radically new planes to intercept strategic bombers and intercontinental cruise missiles. These aircraft needed Mach 3 capability and the capacity to carry long-range missiles. Mikoyan searched for novel solutions to come closer to Mach 3. His E-50, built in 1957, fitted with both a turbojet and a liquid propellant rocket motor, exceeded 1,500 miles per hour. Testing several heavy planes that followed the E-50, the Bureau gained a base of experience, enabling it to create a radically new interceptor. The E-155 first flew in March 1964. It had a tapered wing, lateral intakes, and a twin-finned tail. This heavy, two-engined plane was designed to fly at Mach 2.83. The high speeds required new materials and technology. The E-155's airframe was made of stainless steel and titanium alloys. The overall length of its welded seams equaled the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The extremely complicated series of tests which this type of aircraft required continued for six years. In 1970, this plane entered service as the MiG-25. One primary model was the MiG-25R, a strategic recce plane equipped for both photo and laser reconnaissance and radar and signals intelligence. Another mass-produced version, the MiG-25P, was a radar-equipped interceptor with a standard armament of four long-range R-40 missiles. MiG-25s, designated the E-133 and the E-266, set 29 world records for speed, altitude and climb rate. Some of them still hold. One of the most impressive was set in 1975, when Alexander Fedotov, Mikoyan's chief pilot, climbed 100,000 feet in 4 minutes, 12 seconds. For many years, everything concerning the MiG-25's construction, equipment and maintenance was conducted in strict secrecy. But ironically, this plane became the first MiG to fall in the hands of the NATO military. In September 1976, a top-secret MiG-25 was flown to Japan by a defecting pilot. Although it was returned to the Soviet Union, US Air Force experts had enough time to study the interceptor in detail. The Soviets were forced to further upgrade the MiG. A new version, built in 1977, carried advanced missiles and was equipped with an infrared sensor to detect low-flying targets. This plane remained in service until the early 90s. 
At the same time as the 25 was being upgraded, the Bureau designed a space re-entry vehicle. This small craft, known as the Spiral, was tested in the mid-70s, but never launched into space. Since the mid-1960s, Mikoyan had been working on a new combat fighter to replace the MiG-21. His creation had a variable geometry wing. This concept was the designer's attempt to incorporate the advantages of a straight wing, both during takeoff and landing and at subsonic speeds, with the benefits of a swept wing in supersonic flight. 